Next, I speak about R spoofing attacks. So we know that ARP is normally a request reply protocol where, where the request is broadcast and the reply is going to be unicast. So like when you want to do IP, uh, ARP, ARP mapping, so when you want to do IP to MAC bindings, you know the IP of your destination, which is the same subnet, but you don't know the MAC address of the destination from the same VLAN or subnet, then you're going to ask, you're going to send an ARP request saying, what is the MAC address of IP 1234 to call it simple? And then when the the host in the VLAN that owns that IP address is going to receive your request, it is going to reply saying that the MAC address of IP 1234 is and whatever the MAC address of the, of the host is. Another kind of ARP reply is the GARP or gratuitous ARP. So it's, this is, as the name says, it's actually an unsolicited ARP reply which is used by legitimate but by hosts in general and also by routers to refresh neighbor's ARP cache. Illegitimate use uh, is to spoof someone else's MAC address. And of course, this can be used to facilitate a man-in-the-middle um, attack. So the GARP is in generally used, for example, when a host comes up in the network and has an IP address, is going to send a GARP in the network saying, hey, this is my, my IP to MAC address binding. Or we know when the router flaps the link left value, shut, no shut, is going to send a GARP in the network to make sure that everybody uh, has, um, is aware about its IP to MAC bindings. Or if you change the MAC address of an interface on a router, it's going to flap the link likewise and send a GARP again. So this is used to um, optimize uh, ARP as well. Like for example, if, if there are 50 hosts in the network, 50 users in the network, and everybody wants to speak with me and I'm in the same network w as they are, then instead of them having to send each of them an ARP request to me and me having to reply, it's way better for me just to send a garb saying, hey there, this is my P2Mac bindings, and pretty much that's it. But of course, this also can be used to uh, alleviate uh, attacks in the network and it's going to be known as a, of course, because of our spoofing, is going to be a man-in-the-middle attack. So what happens is looking back at the diagram in here, let's take the same subnet, and let's say that router2's MAC address on this interface, router2's MAC address on this interface, where test PCA is connected, let's say is 222. That's the MAC address of router 2 on that interface. So we know that when test PCA wants to send traffic out of the subnet, it's going to send the packets at layer 2 destined to its default gate, which is router 2. But then what happens is what if somebody in here. So this is router2's MAC address and router2's IP address. So MAC address is going to be that one. And IP address is going to be, let's say, 172.16.96.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.
can send a garb message in the sum. It can send a garb message. So the attacker can send a garb, which is an unsolicited ARB reply, saying that the IP address of 172.16.961, 1, which is the default gateway, is reachable at the MAC address of AAA. 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 So what the attacker says is going to say, you find the IP address of your default gateway to my MAC address. So what's going to end up happening is that when the test PC is going to say, I need to speak with, speak with server A, which means I got to send the packet to my default gateway, which is router 2. And what is the MAC address of router 2, which is AAA now? So initially, test PC A had a valid IP to MAC button in the ARP cache, of 172.16.96.1.222.222.222.222.222.222.222.222.222.222.222.222.222.222.222.222.222.222.222.222.222.222.222.222.222.222.222.222.222.222.222.222.222.222.222.222.222.222.222.222.222.222.222.222.222.222.